first we're going to log into MTBC's Billing Pro. And this username and password are provided to you by email. When we first open up the MTBC Billing Pro, we're taken first to the patient search screen. This is where we can search for the patients of our practice. Now on your practice and on your Billing Pro, when you first open the software, there won't be any patients scheduled or any patients loaded into the system. In that case, we have to create new patients. When we create new patients, we add them into the directory for Billing Pro, and these patients are always then available in the software. To add a new patient, first we can click the New button, or as you can see with the little mouse over, we can hit Alt-N to create a new patient. This is where we'll be taken to the Patient Details window, and this is the window that allows us to update patient demographics, and also create a claim for the patient, and also see the past claims list. So these would be the previous claims that have ever been submitted on behalf of this patient. We'll start from the Personal tab, and from here, we'll just click into the Last Name section, and this is where we'll begin entering the last name for this patient. So I'll just make up a patient. Uh, the last name Smith, Smith, the first name James. We'll assign the patient a date of birth. To assign a date of birth, we can just type in with the keyboard and remembering to put in the slashes, or we can use the handy calendar feature, which allows us to scroll through months or even years. Then we can use the scroll to select the month. We can click also on the, the month itself and then get a drop down of all of the months. So we can say it's August of August 3rd, 1960. And we click on that and now we have the date entered in there. The first name, the last name, and the date of birth are the only fields that are required to actually save a patient into the system. And you'll notice that the save button after it's clicked is no longer red. However, as soon as we begin typing, the Save button turns red to let us know that we have not yet saved our changes. So we can update an address and click Save. And now the address is saved into the record as well. We can just continue updating this demographic information. We'll go to the zip code, and here we can just type out the zip code. We don't need to, to enter a city or state because as soon as we enter a zip code, it automatically finds the city and state. And this also happens as soon as we hit tab. So if I type um, 08823 and tab over into the city, it automatically will pick up the correct city. Let's just fix this. And now we have a city and state. We can also update a patient's gender and marital status. We can provide a social security number, a home phone, a cell phone, a work phone. And again, I'm just using the tab on the keyboard to jump over into the next space. We don't need to enter a financial guarantor at this time or indicate whether the patient has been disabled or has expired, but these fields allow you to enter this information uh, pretty easily. The email address, again, is pretty straightforward. Emergency contact, the relationship, and a phone number are easily entered from here. The default provider will be selected as the default provider of the practice. We can enter a referring physician if one exists and also a location that uh, the location is for the location of the practice. Which address or which location is the patient going to be attending? If we only have one location in the practice, it will automatically select that default location. And any additional notes can be entered here if we want to say this patient is a relative or if this patient um, should no longer be accepted at the practice. Those types of notes can be entered here and saved into the record for this patient. Now if we have a webcam at the front desk, it's pretty easy to snap a picture of the patient clicking on this webcam button. 
and the patient's picture would automatically be loaded into the system. <coughs> Now, if we'd like, now, to, if add we'd like an, to add insurance, insurance for, this patient, for this patient, we can go we can down, go into down this insurances, this insurances section, section and click and on, click add, on add modify, modify button, button to add insurance, to add insurance, for, insurance this for this patient. When we click the Add Modify button, we're immediately presented with the patient insurance window, where here we have the option to enter up to three insurances for this patient. We'll just begin with insurance number one. And one of the fields that you'll notice frequently in our EMR is the plus sign and the clear button, the plus and the X, the add and clear buttons. Here when we're ready to add an insurance, we'll click on the add button. And now we have the option to search by name or search by address. And they're both equally good ways to find an insurance. But let's give this a shot and see how it works. Let's say we want to add Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey. Well, we can begin typing BC BS dash NJ. And here we'll be presented with all of the addresses for Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey. And what we can do is sort by address. I'll click once on the address column to get it in a specific uh, order and I can just select the PO box of my choice I'll double click as soon as I double click it automatically locks into the record here the insurance name and the address and this is where we have the option to select if this is a primary insurance a secondary insurance or a tertiary insurance for this patient for now I'm just gonna mark it as the primary I can also enter a specific policy number and by looking at the patient's card, we can just enter this policy number. And also, this field allows for prefixes or suffixes or multiple letters. Um, whatever is on the insurance card can be entered directly into this field. And the same applies for the group number. As you know, the group number will include at times alpha characters as well as numeric characters. And those can also be entered here. For, for now, we'll leave the subscriber blank and we'll, relieve, we'll leave the relationship blank and we'll just mark down that the patient has a $20 copay. We can enter if we like the deductible information to show that the patient has um, a $200 deductible. And we can also enter if there are any effective or termination dates using these date fields here. And again, we have the handy calendar to choose from. For now, we'll just leave both of those blank. If the patient has a second insurance, well, we can just, again, follow the same process and click on the Add button. And now we can go and find the patient's Cigna insurance. And here we can, again, sort it by address or even sort it by state if there are multiple states. We'll scroll down till we find the Pennsylvania 5909 address, and I'll double click. Again, we'll select that this is uh, the type of insurance this is going to be a secondary insurance we'll enter the policy number and a group number again we'll leave subscriber and relationship blank we'll say this has no copay and we're all done entering our insurances once we've entered all of this information we'll just hit the OK button to put this into the patient's record and now you can see here all of the information that we entered has come over pretty nicely. And again, the Save button has turned red to let us know that it's time to save our changes. So we'll click on Save. Once we've saved this record, this patient is now searchable from our main patient search list. And we can go and confirm that by closing this window and going to Patient Search. So we created a patient, Smith, with the name James, there he is. We can just double click again and go find all of the information that we had previously entered. Now if we're ready to create a claim for this patient that's pretty straightforward. We can click on this claim tab to go and create a claim for this patient. When we click the claim tab it's automatically going to load a super bill of our diagnosis and procedure codes. Now these are the diagnosis and procedure codes that come preloaded into the EMR. You may want to change these codes. You may want different diagnosis and different procedure codes to come up for your claim list.
and my claim list and your claim list will be two completely different lists. Well, you're able to do that through the system management menu, which we'll cover in another video. If we're ready to submit a claim for this patient, first thing we must do is select a diagnosis code, and then we'll select a procedure code. If there are multiple diagnosis codes to be selected, all we have to do is put a check mark in those codes. So now we've selected the diagnosis code for extrinsic asthma and for esophageal reflux. And the diagnosis codes are also visible uh, on the same list along with the description of those codes. If we're ready to select a procedure code, well then we can just go find our procedure code and put a check mark in that box. And now the diagnosis code 2 for the esophageal reflux has been applied to the 99213. And we can also update the second pointer as well. However, for now, I'm just going to leave these in the original order in which they were selected and go back to the claim. We can also confirm that there's an insurance entered for the specific claim before we submit it by clicking on the payment slash insurances button. Here we can see that there are two insurances for this patient. There's a primary insurance and there's a secondary insurance. And I'm happy with the way those two insurances are entered. Any additional information regarding this claim can be entered from the Other Information tab or the Other Information button. And here, if we need to, to enter that this was performed at a specific facility or that this is relating to an auto accident or if there are any spine manipulation or physical exam or other information that are required, those can all be entered from here. But for now, I don't need to enter any of that information and I can just go back to the claim. The filing submission tab or button allows me to file this claim directly right from this screen. However, what we're going to do is file all of our claims together at the end of the day. We can, if we like, submit this claim directly to MTBC right at this time and receive and modify and view our scrubber claim status which will let us know if this claim will be accepted or if it needs any modification of any kind. But for now I'm happy with the diagnosis codes and the procedure code that I've entered. I've entered this claim completely and I'm ready to save my changes. So now I can just click the save button and again 
when the save button turns from red into gray it tells us that our claim has been saved and we can even go into the claims list for this patient and see the details of this claim the claim number has been assigned the date of service is there the attending physician the total amount due and any amounts that have been paid and who created this claim the username who created this claim now at the top of this list we see the claim list below we see claim notes right now all it's telling me is that this claim has been created with a value of ninety five dollars we have not yet submitted this claim we can now um, go into another patient's account and create another claim and I'll show you that that's a quick and easy process so let's now go and find another patient and now we can go check on Jane Smith's account and here we can see that her insurance is entered as well and her demographics are updated and we can go create a claim for Jane Smith and once you get accustomed to this claim creation process as you can see it can be a very quick and easy claim submission process. We select our diagnosis codes, we select our procedure codes, and we can click Save. Finding a patient and generating a claim is a very straightforward process and can be done in just a matter of seconds. Click on the Claim tab, again select the diagnosis and procedure codes, and click Save.